Hi guys, I uh, thought I'd give you a quick review on to how to make your own uh, quill. But most of the video I've seen actually do not cover a few um, not so obvious items. They actually go directly into uh, cutting the quill and not reviewing what you need or how you need to do it. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to do so. Uh, most of the quills that you actually, you actually see them uh, will actually perform correctly. They will actually write um, something like this. I've done that yesterday night or it's actually the same quill that did this one as well. I just cut it later after it was a bit smaller. But just to actually go through that, um, basically the quills are feathers from a bird and they actually have different size and shape. So this is actually the lift, the feather used for a lift in a goose. This is a good goose, goose feather, by the way. Uh, you can see this is very, very thin. This is much broader. It's very curved. Um, this is the best you can get for writing straight up. I've already cut that one out. And then you can notice as you go down is actually there's more and more of the left part. See this one, for example, is almost symmetrical. And then you get um, these ones, which actually are more feathers to keep the bird warm. Now uh, these are too thin, the stem, you know, it's, it's too thin. You can't do much with it. It doesn't offer a lot of resistance. Uh, yeah, see, it breaks. So you can forget that one. But apart from that, all the other one, you can actually convert them into a quill. That's not really a problem. The uh, size of the writing is completely independent from um, how big the quill is at the beginning. Obviously, there's a maximum size you're going to get. Uh, so with this one, I can write as small as with this one. There's not a problem. The uh, <clears throat> other things you should know is that if you actually buy uh, quills that have a metal end, so it's not a, you know it's not actually the the part of the bird that is being used to write with. It's just a metal nib. It just looks nice. Uh, you have a, a slight problem of how you hold it. Right. As you, you've noticed, I, I, I have cut with scissors simply the part that actually does not allow me to rest on the knuckle. You can get used with the metal ones to actually write like this. I found it has a little problem is that actually it does restrain from the, the you know, it resists a little bit in terms of the, the movement. Um, but you can get used to it. So you can write with this. You don't have to cut it. If you actually do without a metal part, I would suggest you do. Uh, you can be as brutal as I've been in just chopping it off to just fit what you really want. So it's just a writing instrument rather than actually looking like a, a nice quill from the movies. Uh, it will work, right? Or you can go really even more brutal um, and just cut it off to really what you need. There's a few things you need to know <clears throat> as well as that. If I take this one, you notice that this actually is a lot broader than this, right? It's, you know, much wider. And you need that because this is what's going to give the resistance when you're going to press on it. If it's were perfectly round, it would actually uh, collapse like you've seen with a, with a small feather. Uh, interestingly enough, the very small ones actually have that even more. So this is actually really broad compared to this. The proportion is not the same. But what really matters is when you're writing, you actually have to work it out in such a way that the part that actually is going to write will actually rest as much as possible in the la in the direction of the flattest part, so it gives more resistance to it. A small, like this, this is a smaller, a smaller feather. Will have one drawback is that the sides are actually thinner, a lot thinner than a than one of the lift feather used for the lift. Uh, which means that it will be less resistant. What I did is I use I use some tape. It's a simple, you know, desk tape. Put it on, and then wrap it up. This was the first quill I made. It works actually really, really well. This, although it looks completely ugly, this actually quill writes um, very, very well. It holds an enormous amount of ink. The only drawback with the tape and uh, I actually learned from it. I actually used, for example, in this one, I've used tape as well, but I don't use as much. 
is that uh, it tends to have a capillary reaction. So when you dip into the ink, the ink will go back. And <laughs> if you notice, it, it does go back quite a bit, right? So if you use a lot of tape, <clears throat> you're gonna have a completely black finger from here to here. Um, yeah, so you need gloves if you wanna do that. But it does write really, really well. I can put ink up to here. I don't know if you notice, but actually all of those quills actually have a metal part inside. And like this one is nice and shiny. The reason for that originally was this one was actually not sturdy enough. Um, if I pressed on it, it bent a lot. Whereas if you have a metal wire going from the front to the end, it actually resists really, really well. It's very resistant now, so I can press on it if I want to. And I can't press too much because the end will bend as well. So that's not so cool. The other benefit of actually having um, a wire, I'll show this when I actually make the video for how I cut the quill, but you see there's a little hook in it and that actually goes in the middle, right? And that that that's actually works as a reservoir. So it holds more ink with this than if you just wouldn't have it. Um, now, you need to do trial and errors in regards of how much forward or backwards you want to have it and how big the fold is because depending on how broad your nib is, it will work more or less well. So if you've got a reservoir that holds a lot of ink and then you've got a small, uh, the, the, uh, a small nib at the end, um, basically you're going to have ink pouring on the page. So you're going to have things like this. So it works, it's just that um, you don't have as much control on the ink volume. Uh, where what you want is something fairly regular, right? So there's no much change in terms of the ink color when you're writing. So you need to try that out, uh, but it basically works. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things as well in regards of how you cure the feather. So when you get a feather, you can, this is again, feather that I got from the park. So I get them, they're dirty. Uh, they, you know, they fell from on the ground. Uh, I use simple dishwashing soap. Uh, when you use, you know, in your kitchen and then actually wash them in the direction of, I guess, and that's enough to clean them up. I don't necessarily need to have them perfectly clean, to be honest with you. Uh, that's fine as well. And then when you've got them and they're clean and they dried up a little, <clears throat> you can actually put them into a container. This is just a jam pot. And in there I've got some, um, I've got some salt. Um, you don't need to have, uh, I use basically what I've got in the kitchen. So there's some thin and, and big grains of salt. It doesn't matter. The only reason why I've got paper is I'm trying to actually make it as high as I can without spending too much salt. And then you, you dip the feathers in it. You put that in an oven at 100 degrees. You let them cook for maybe, um, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. You let the oven cool down, you let them actually cool down, you take them out of the oven, you let them cool down for a couple of hours and they're ready to go. There's one thing you need to bear in mind though is that uh, this is actually quite small feather, right? Uh, this one is a little bit longer. So when you're in the oven, you need to be careful it doesn't touch the top because it's always going to burn. Um, 100 degrees won't normally burn a feather, but if it touches the obviously iron part that are hot, it will burn it. So if you intend to have a nice long feather, that doesn't work at all. But that's all you've got to do. So you can do that with sand as well. I've never tried, I've heard that sand works. Uh, <clears throat> effectively, all is, this is doing is the part that is here needs to be extremely dry. Um, and then with the heat, it, 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 it hardens a little bit, which will make the writing easier and the uh, nib to be more resistant. That's all you need to do. Um, the last part as well for this introduction video is the ink you need. So this is a simple, this is a simple fountain pen ink. It works like a charm. Uh, amazingly enough, that color is actually works really, really well on the, on the, with quills. Um, it gives this color, which gives an old fashioned look. Um, this is <coughs> ink from Bortoletti. This is this color actually. Uh, this is actually made for um, for a dip pen. 
it doesn't really make a lot of difference to my experience. Um, there's not a, you know, it's so unlike with metal queer, metal um, nibs, where the ink really makes a huge difference. It seems to be a lot more tolerant with quills, from my experience. So with that, um, that gives you the introduction of the background. You can go to your local park, get some uh, feathers, and then, um, yeah, get ready with this. All you need is a bit of uh, salt, a little bit of um, an oven. You need to have a, a scalpel to cut things out and a, a metal uh, steel wire, and um, you're ready to go.